Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. A few weeks ago, I'd mentioned wanting to begin a new series showing people how to record their first song in Reaper, and I'm happy to announce that I'm finally starting that series. Now, admittedly, this first episode may be a bit boring to the seasoned veterans of Reaper, but even if you've been using Reaper for a while, you may still pick up some tips and tricks to help optimize your workflow. If you're new to the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell. We won't be doing much in the way of tracking in this episode, I'd like to focus on the preparation phase. I know that some may want to go ahead and get right into recording, but you need to have a plan for what you're going to record and how you're going to accomplish it, at least at a base level. Let's take a look at Reaper and get started. I've got a blank project open at the moment. This is typically what one would see when they're opening Reaper for the first time, although my toolbar at the top is likely very different from yours as I've customized it to suit my own workflow. There's a few things in Reaper that I like to change to make sure that my projects and my files are organized in a way that makes a lot more sense than the default. The default in Reaper likes to put all your eggs in one basket, if you'll pardon the expression. All of your audio goes into the same folder for every project, unless you specify where you want that audio to be recorded. Let's take a look at Options and Preferences. Once you've got Preferences open, go to the top and take a look at General. One of the things that I like to change under General in Preferences is the startup settings. It's been so long since I've changed this that I really don't remember what the default setting is, but I like to change mine to Prompt. I think the default may be Last Active Project, and what that means is once you open Reaper, it'll automatically open whatever the last project is that you had open. With Prompt selected, I can choose from a list of recent projects, or I can choose to create a new project. There's no wrong answer here, just whatever suits your workflow. I suppose it's best just to be aware that this option exists, and you can control what Reaper does when you launch it. The next thing I'd like to take a look at is the Paths option. By default, each of these is blank. I like to set a default place to save new projects, and that place is on my desktop in a folder called Reaper Projects. The next option is the default render path, and this can be a relative path. What I mean by relative path is, since I just have the word rendered, it'll create a subdirectory inside of my project folder called rendered, and any media that I render, or export, or bounce, or whatever words you'd like to use there, by default will be placed into the rendered subdirectory of that particular project. The next option is the default recording path, and this is simply a location where Reaper will save any audio that you record if you've not given the project a name yet. I've just created a temporary folder, but it's not very often that I use this. I like to actually name each of my projects and create a subfolder. I'll show you how to do that shortly. The next option is for peak cache files and where Reaper will store them. When you track audio in Reaper, Reaper will create a visualization of the waveforms, and this location simply tells Reaper where to keep all of those files. Instead of keeping those files in a subdirectory with the project, I tend to keep them all in one folder. If you were to take a look at that folder, they're somehow broken down. I'm not sure how Reaper organizes it, but the information that's contained in that folder can safely be deleted if you find that it's taking up too much space. Reaper will dynamically rebuild these peak files on the fly if they're ever missing. The next setting is for keyboard and multi-touch, but I tend to leave these where they are. If you're using a touchscreen or a trackpad that supports multi-touch, you may want to take a look at these settings. Our next portion is the project settings, and I do have some things that I like to change here. The first option that I have checkmarked is prompt to save on new project. What this does is anytime I create a new project, Reaper will prompt me to save that project. It's pretty much self-explanatory. The other option on this page that I change is in the project savings section. These first two, if I recall, should be checkmarked by default, but the next settings are not. The next settings are what I use to create automatic backups in Reaper to make sure that I never lose a project. While Reaper doesn't crash very often, I do see people on the forums sometimes complaining about a crash and them not being able to recover from a project. Having the backup settings properly configured can help you to quickly recover from a crash. I have mine set to save every 5 minutes when not recording, and the way that I have that configured to save is to save to a timestamped file in an additional directory. Now this additional directory can also be a relative path, and in my case I create a subfolder called Automatic Backups inside of the project folder. This way, as the settings would suggest, Reaper will automatically create a backup every five minutes when I'm not recording. You can adjust that timer for whatever suits your workflow best. I do have off-site backup for my computer, and my system is also on a battery backup, so I'm not too terribly worried about things going down. The five minute setting tends to work fine for me. Our next setting is the track and send defaults. There's not a lot that I've changed in here, but there is one setting that I'd like for you to be aware of. In previous versions of Reaper, I would see in the forums pretty frequently when someone would say that they can't hear when they're trying to record. As of Reaper 6, the default for any track is to have input monitoring turned on. Input monitoring allows you to hear the input signal. 
for example, if you had a microphone plugged into your first track and that track were record armed, you would be able to hear yourself playing back through Reaper as you speak. If you'd like to edit those settings, we have an option here for record config, and it doesn't look like this is really configurable, but as I click this, it brings up a dialog. Here I have monitor input, and again, if you have a new installation of Reaper, this is likely already checked. I like to have mine unchecked, but I don't really have much of a logical reason why. I just do. There are several different options here that you can change to your liking, just to make sure that by default, your tracks are set up the way that you want. For example, if you like to have your tracks record armed by default, I can check mark that and apply, and that will apply to any new tracks. So as I add a new track here, you can see that it's already record armed, and you can see that it's already picking up my microphone, but we can't hear it back because I don't have record monitoring turned on by default. I'll go back and set that back to the way that I like it, hit apply, and my next track is not armed by default. Anything that you set in here can be changed after the fact, but you can set up your defaults how you like it. Let's get rid of these tracks. The next section that I like to change is in the Appearance section. Underneath Appearance, we'll go to Media, and this controls the appearance of some media items. By default, most of these are turned off. I like to turn on just about every one of them. And what these do is add buttons to the top of the media items that allow me to access certain parameters. One in particular that I advise to add is the Volume knob. After enabling the Volume knob, the other item that I like to change is the Item Volume Handles. By default, this is set to have a handle at the top of the item at 0 dB to where you can turn down any media item. I set that to no handle in favor of the knob. I'll record a quick bit of audio to show you what this does. Let's add another track, arm it, and I'll just start talking. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. Now, if I zoom in on this media item, let me disarm the track there, we can see that I have all the buttons that I've specified. I can grab this volume knob at the top left and turn the clip up or down. This affects the volume of this media item before effects or the fader. So if you find something was recorded too loud or too quiet, you can adjust the volume with that knob. If we take that back to the default and turn off the volume knob and take this back to the handle at the top, we now see that, that we can only turn this down by grabbing this almost invisible handle and we can bring it down, but we can't bring it up. I don't like this method because it also leaves a visible line on the media item. I'll take that back to the way that I like it. And apply, and we're right back to having the knob. Outside of that, about the only other thing that I changed by default is the project settings. I'll go to File, and Project Settings. And let's take a look at some of the settings in this dialog. My default for a project is 120 beats per minute, and that is the default that Reaper comes with. I don't bother with this because I manually set the tempo of each project anyway. I also don't have a check mark on the project sample rate because I just use the sample rate of the audio interface. This next section is interesting. This says time base for items, envelopes, and markers. I have mine set for time. I believe the default is set for beats. This is a little bit difficult to explain, but if I have my time base set for time, my items will stay in the time they were recorded regardless of tempo changes that may happen later. For example, this project is currently at 120 beats per minute. If I change the project tempo to 150 beats per minute, you can see that my ruler has changed to match that, but my media item stays exactly the same. If I go back into my project settings and set this for beats, and apply that, and now if I change this to 200 beats per minute, you can see that the play rate of my item has changed. I'll undo that. Since I work primarily with live audio and not MIDI, I like to have my default time base set to time because I want my media items to sound like they did when they were recorded. If I have that set to beats instead of time, as you saw, the media item adjusted itself to match the tempo of the song. The next option is time base for tempo and time signature envelopes, and of course I like to have those set to beats. I don't really have a great explanation for this parameter, I just leave that at its default of beats. A couple of other things I'd like to take a look at here is the Media tab. Under the Media tab, by default, the path to save media files is blank. This can be a relative path, and as you can see, I've placed the word audio in mine. What this will do is create a subfolder inside of the project folder called audio. Anything that I record will be dumped into this audio subfolder instead of being thrown into the top level folder with the project file. Down below we have our recording defaults. The default on this was fine for me, 24-bit wave. If you like to change it to something else, whether it be FLAC, AIFF, MP3, or whatever, you have several options here that you can choose from. 
That's about all that I change in my project settings, but the important part from here is once you get this configured to something that you believe would be a good default for you, there's an option at the lower right to save as the default project settings. This ensures that every new project that I create will always have this subfolder for my audio. Now with those settings changed, I'm going to close Reaper and reopen it and show you what it looks like for me when I launch a new instance. I'm not going to save this. Now I'll launch Reaper from my taskbar. And as configured, it prompts me for what I want to do. Since we're going to be recording a new song, I'll do New Project and click OK. As you'll recall, I also had this set to prompt me to save on a new project. You can see I've got the dialog up to save a project, and it's in my default folder location of Reaper projects on the desktop. What I like to do here is make sure to checkmark this option to create a subdirectory for the project. This way I'll have a subfolder inside of my Reaper projects folder. I'll give the project a name, and I'll save that, and that will create the subfolder. And now I'll go and change my project's tempo before recording anything and hit OK. You can see that my ruler has adjusted itself. My project has a name. Let's take a look at that folder. I'll open up my file explorer, move it over to the correct screen, go to Reaper Projects, and here is our folder that we just created, which is called Sure Emma Rosa. I'll open that up and we can see that we have the project file here, but nothing else. You can create a track by double clicking either in the track control panel or the mix control panel. I'll go back to Reaper and just double click here to create the track. And I like to give all of my tracks a name. We'll just call this testing or test or something to that effect. My default for which input is assigned to a new track is input one, which I've currently got my speaking mic on. I'll record arm that and you can see that we've got activity. And I'll press record. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. Check, check. One, two, three. Upon stopping the recording, I'm prompted to save or delete the files. A lot of people like to uncheck this so that they're no longer prompted, but I like to leave this up so I can delete a take that I didn't like. That just keeps me from having to clean out my file system later. I'll go ahead and save that for now, and let's take a look at the subfolder for the project. We can see now that our audio subfolder has been created, and there is the track that we just recorded. You can see it's got the track name of test, and it's also got a timestamp for when it was recorded. If I wait long enough, my automatic backups should start to show up in here. I'll take a moment to drink some coffee while we wait for five minutes to pass by. This is one of those times where having a lower threshold for how often to set your automatic backups would come in real handy. This is the longest five minutes I have ever waited. All right, it looks like our five minutes has finally passed, and as you can see, the automatic backup subfolder has been created. If I double click this folder, we can see that we've got a backup file of our project with a timestamp for when that backup happened. For my configuration, Reaper will continue to make automatic backups inside of this subfolder inside the project folder every five minutes when I'm not recording. We'll cover more about these automatic backups in a later episode when we're actually tracking. There's a few things that I like to do as I'm recording and mixing that allow me to quickly look at the automatic backups folder and look at any backup and know what phase of the recording or mixing process I was in at the time the backup was made. Everything we've done up to this point is simply to make sure that we have a properly organized structure for our projects. I can look inside of my Reaper projects folder and I've got subfolders based on the year, some of them are just sitting on the top level, but every project is neatly contained in its own subfolder. I'll take a look at a more recent one here. Now this one's a little bit of a mess, but you can see that each of the projects that I've saved in here is from a different phase. If I scroll down and go to my automatic backups folder, I can see automatic backups, but they all have a name attached to them for which phase I was in while working on the project. It may look a little bit messy, but if you've ever seen the default for Reaper with everything in a single folder, this is much better. If nothing else, I can quickly go to a folder, right click it, and zip it, and everything that anyone else would need to get started working on that project is self-contained. Now that we've got the project set up, we're a lot closer to ready to begin tracking. When we come back to this, we'll take a look at settings for our interface, and we'll record some scratch guitar tracks. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the buy me a coffee, I like coffee or Patreon link below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time.
five minutes.